I'm T Pain, <laughs> and welcome to Let's Learn C++. Today I'll be using Visual Studio Community Edition, which you can download from visualstudio.com. However, you can follow along with whatever you like. Check out the description below for links to previous tutorials or playlists if any topic is unfamiliar. All right, so virtual. Virtual means not real, and reality means real. So virtual reality means non-real reality or fake reality. And there's where I live and spend most of my days, mainly because it's safe and fine to kill virtual people. And my current kill count is up to about 3 million. Thanks, Grand Theft Auto. That was ridiculous. All right, so the keyword virtual says that if there is a subclass or derived class implementation, use that. Otherwise, use this. If that sounds weird, just stick around. It'll make sense in a minute. Virtual enables polymorphism to be its most powerful. To use virtual, all we do is place the keyword virtual in front of the class members, aka the methods. Generally, you place the keyword before the return type, but adding it after the return type but before the function or method name would also work. I just wouldn't recommend it. Let's take a look at our code. All right, so up top we have our include IO stream, include string, and using namespace standard just to make our lives a little easier. Then we have our base class created here called the my base class, and inside it, it just has a public function or method called print. And all it does is print inside base and then a new line character. And the big difference here is that we've added the keyword virtual in front of the return type. And I actually don't need this colon right here. I don't know why I added that. <laughs> then below that, we have our inheriting or derived class or our subclass called my derived. And here we just go ahead and inherit from the base class. And then we override the existing base class function called print and then just print inside derived. So here we have inside base, then we have inside derived. And then below that in the main function, we're just creating an instance of the derived class printing, then creating a base class reference to the derived class instance, and then calling the print function. And then finally we create a base instance itself called b2 and calling the print function there. So let's see what it outputs. Okay, so the very first function we have called is derived, which is correct. That's exactly what we'd expect. Here's where things get interesting. We have a base class reference right here and it's calling the print. So previously without the virtual function, that would actually print out base just as the one below it does. But since we have added the keyword virtual to it, it says, called the lowest implementation of this function. Very cool. So that's where we want, we get the power of polymorphism. Awesome. So again, we see that the derived or subclass function or method will be called if virtual is present in the base class right here. What happens when we remove the derived classes implementation though? What happens if we just comment out this line right here? that actually implements this print function in the derived class. What will happen then? Will it give us any compiling errors right here? No, actually. Instead, it calls the base class implementation of print every single time. So if you don't actually create an implementation of this function, it'll revert to calling the base classes version. Awesome. So it's super cool that the base class becomes the default if we forget to implement in the derived. It's basically making the implementations optional. What happens if you implement the virtual in the second or third subclasses? Well, the bottom most implementation will be called just as you'd expect. By the way, it is highly recommended to include virtual in subclasses or derived classes so that it is clear that it is overriding something. So it's fine to add virtual right here to our derived class implementation. It doesn't actually do any harm. In fact, it actually makes it clear that you are overriding something from some base class. So it is beneficial to just add it there, even if you're not creating a third or fourth or fifth layer of derived classes. Now, what if we don't want this print function up in the base class to be an option? What if we never want this base class function to be called? This is where pure virtualization or pure virtual methods comes in. Pure virtualization is accomplished by substituting the code where a function would be defined with an equals zero. 
it forces inheriting classes to then implement that function. All right, so here we've just replaced that original code block with an equals zero right here. And what we've done below is we've commented out our implementation in the derived class. And now watch what happens when we try to create an instance of our derived class. We get a compiling error that says, object of abstract type my derived is not allowed. Pure virtual function my base colon colon print has no overrider. So it's saying that we have not created an implementation of our print function in the derived class. And so if we try to run it, it won't work. We're just going to instead get some build errors. Cool, that's what we would expect. So all we gotta do is uncomment this block here, click the uncomment button up top, and now we have our implementation and everything is happy shiny. And if we run it, it works beautifully. Ta-da, inside derived is called successfully, cool. So then what happens when we actually create a base reference to the instance of our derived class? Do you think it'll work or not? When we call that print function, it actually works just fine. Even though it is a base reference right here, it's still pointing to our derived class and the bottom most function is going to still be called because again, virtual is added in front of our base class method. Perfect. So let's go ahead and press enter to close that out. Note that you cannot set regular non-virtual functions equal to zero. Also note that the keyword virtual does not work on class member variables. You cannot place it before a variable for reasons that we'll discuss in a future tutorial. Pure virtual functions or methods leads us to the topic of abstract classes, which we will discuss in our next tutorial. And now some C++ core guidelines. C.10 says prefer concrete types over class hierarchies. A concrete type is smaller, faster, and simpler. Now what this is saying is that rather than creating a very rigid hierarchy of like, let's say, base class, base class character, then NPC, then villager, then talking villager, or whatever it may be, rather than creating this very rigid hierarchy where it's very difficult to make changes to any base class implementation without having unforeseen breakage in your characters or whatever it is that you're creating. Breaking stuff up into individual classes makes things easier on you down the road. C.35 says base class with virtual functions needs virtual destructor. Once we get into dynamic memory allocation, you'll see why this is so critical. C.82 says don't call virtual functions in a constructor or destructor. Yeah, I wouldn't ever recommend that because <laughs> you're calling functions that don't exist yet. In our next tutorial, we'll discuss abstract and interface classes. Thank you so much for watching. Great job keeping up. Challenge your skills at hackerrank.com. Special thanks to my Patreon supporters. And as always, like, subscribe, and keep the dream alive. <laughs>